In this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can analyze Likert scale items that are called from one to seven, strongly disagree to strongly agree uh, using JASP, which is a free open source software. So we can do different types of analysis like uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics, mean, standard deviation, frequencies, percentages for descriptive, whereas for inferential statistics, we need to test some assumptions like reliability, factor analysis for validity, discriminant validity, convergent validity. Then we can move to uh, con composite score computation and regression, correlation, ANOVA, chi-square, in addition to other statistics. So this is in case we want to test the hypothesis. So basically, if we have a Likert scale, we need to know whether the items that we have need to be reverse coded. If some items are negatively worded, they need to be reverse coded. So usually we know that from the scales we adapt them from. So suppose that EL1 needs to be reverse coded first. It needs to be defined as a scale variable. Like if we double click here, it should be scale. This is the first assumption to do in JASP. The second thing is we go to the uh, this uh, icon, which is at the end. And then we can please, uh, we can click the plus icon here. And I call it, for example, EL1 one and r for reverse coding and i will just choose that it is scale and create a variable so a new variable would be created so this is data transformation and here i could just put an equation like this what i will take since this is a seven point liquid scale what i will take is, or what i will do is that i will take uh, seven uh, plus uh, one which is the lowest end and the highest end which is eight so I will just take eight and I will subtract it from the variable that I want to, to check, which is this one. And then I will click compute column. And this is what will happen. So here the items have been reverse coded. You could see here four or two. And in the other side of EL, so we have, for example, six became two and four remained four because it is like in the middle and one here like uh, in this icon which is four so one should become seven you see it so this is reverse coding in brief so you take the lowest end you add it to the highest end and then you add the number that you get you subtract it from the variable that you want to reverse score it is as quick as this so the next step after reverse coding uh i'm just showing you this example because here i don't need to reverse code anything so I need to test the reliability, the Cronbach's alpha reliability, so that I can do the composite score uh, computation. So to test the Cronbach's alpha reliability, I will need to go here and click unidimensional reliability in case I have internal Cronbach's alpha reliability interclass correlation for test, retest, or inter-rater reliability, or uh, it's used mostly for rating. Rater agreement, the blunt Altman plot. So we have different types of reliability. So I just choose classical unidimensional reliability and I will put those items here for EL and then I will put them in this variable and I need to see the Cronbach alpha reliability. If I click the analysis, here I have the Cronbach's alpha, I will add it. Can also add Cronbach's alpha if item dro drops. You see that the, the Cronbach alpha here is 0.894, which is perfect for this scale, I, I will show you a, a table that contains those thresholds. So if it is, uh, if the Cronbach alpha is 0 0.09 and above, it is excellent according to this reference. If it is between 8 and 9, or 0 0.8 and 0 0.89, which are 80%, 90%, it is good. If it is between 0 0.70 and 80, it is acceptable. If it is between 60 and 70, it is questionable. So the best uh, threshold is 0 0.70 and above. So anything above 0 0.70 is good for the Cronbach alpha reliability. So anything above 0.7 is good for the Cronbach alpha reliability. So this is what we did. So in our case, we have uh, and the scales here and we have, for example, EL, which is AI literacy. So uh, the uh, Cronbach alpha that I got, I will type it here in addition to the mean score standard deviation. So I will need to enter this data manually like this till I finish and then I will put the interpretation of all these results. So as you can see here, all the items are reliable. So, so that's why we can proceed with uh, the composite score computation for each construct so that we can run regression and correlation tests later. So this is going to be the topic of the next video. So stay tuned and see you soon.